If you had to pick a Mr. Wright from the movies to be your ideal husband, who would it be? Mr. Darcy. <laughs> Hands down, Mr. Darcy. Hugh Grant, every single movie. <laughs> All of the men in love, actually. Aw, oh, Mr. Big. <laughs> Sex in the City? You yeah. Bet. Yeah. Oh, Vince Vaughn. <laughs> really? <laughs> Whatever role he plays. Oh, really? yeah. That's or, or Tony. Choice. What's the... Uh, Soprano? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, can we do like a combination, like Brad Pitt look? Oh, yeah, yeah, Hugh Grant personality. <laughs> like, what does Mr. Wright look like in the countries where you're from? He's not there. <laughs> I don't think I ever decided to look for Mr. Wright and really seek him out, but I was kind of intrinsically programmed to seek him out. It was just kind of the way it was. I thought, I'm going to find a man just like these guys in the movies, and it's just going to be a fairy tale happy ending, and that's just the way it's going to be. Aaron's bed was amazing. I think it, it was a double or a queen. It was a decent sized bed and she slept on half of it and the other half was stacked with chiclet, so Bridget Jones, etc. They took up half her bed where she could have let a person be if she'd let go of some of the um, ideals that were in the books she was reading. I started questioning what role chiclet and romantic comedies were having in my life when my ex-boyfriend accused me of needing a man to act like a guy out of the movies. He said, you need a man to be in his underwear and be running down the street with a stereo over his head, blasting a love song while he screams out your name to really believe that somebody loves you and you won't settle for anything less. No flowers. My first thought was, no, I'm not like that. But then it was kind of, well, is that so much to ask? And so now I'm wondering, is that too much to ask? In the movies, Mr. Wright always shows up at the airport with last minute I love yous. In reality, we're lucky if he shows up at all. In sports, the National Hockey League features busy. Ever since women were little, little girls, they have been consuming the fairy tale about so many things, about, about dating, about marriage, about weddings. Our media culture, from the time that we're small children, is sending these messages about what relationships should be that don't really match the way they are in the real world. I mean, from childhood, we start with reading fairy tales and getting that sense of one day my prince will come, right? And you're meant to be rescued by this prince who is going to take you away from everything that's bad and ugly and dirty in your world, and they're going to give you this amazing place. You're going to live in that land far away, and that's what you get. You're happily ever after. I think my first notion of a Mr. Right and this perfect man that I was looking for was actually Disney's Robin Hood because he was so brave and he was handsome and he was dashing. And he was a cartoon character, but still, I really loved those qualities. So I thought maybe there is a perfect man out there like that that I can then be with. Hopefully not just in a cartoon form. <laughs> Whether it's the books, the magazines, the movies, all these things just feed into women's false expectations. They're unrealistic thoughts and wishes that they're going to get this perfect fairy tale life. And it doesn't really exist. In romantic comedies and chiclet, Mr. Wright comes in several different, yet somehow similar forms. He's lusciously handsome and extremely successful. He's witty and charming. It may seem like he isn't ready to commit, but deep down all he wants is to find, marry, and start a family with the woman of his dreams. Mr. Wright will do anything to win your heart, anything, as long as it expresses just how far he's willing to go to prove his love for you. Mr. Wright is pretty damn incredible. No wonder so many of us keep looking for him. But is what we're looking for changing? I think because women are so successful today and so financially independent that they're looking for different things today than they were 50 years ago. The current job description for a good husband is to be all things to one person. 
You need to be a good provider, a chauffeur, a housekeeper, a cook, a nanny, and you also have to be that person's best friend. Well, I feel like saying to those women, well, go get a girlfriend, because men are not women. As the sociological shift evolves, we're bombarded with messages telling us that this new and improved guy is out there. And he'll say things like, You are lovelier this morning than you have ever been. When he's actually far more likely to say things like, Hey, you want a drink or whatever? Like, I've been looking at you, I've been seeing you, you look cool. Did you fall out of uh, heaven this morning? <laughs> I don't really have to say a whole lot. I'm incredibly good looking. Reality looks pretty lame in comparison. And it's not just what they say that looks lame. Women are rejecting perfectly nice men because they don't look like Sawyer out of Lost. You know, and not everyone can look like Sawyer out of Lost. I'd say even Sawyer doesn't look like Sawyer out of Lost many days when he hasn't been at the fake tan and all. If you look at TV, you look at movies, at least North American, what you find is a great stereotype. There's probably about 10 different heads and maybe three or four different bodies and they're interchangeable. We are surrounded by images of these perfect celebrities everywhere we go, right? So I was thinking about it. It's like, what kind of effect does being surrounded by celebrities have? You know, you walk into an, a place and there's just an average guy there and you're used to seeing celebrities, so it's like, mm, average guy, not so attractive. When an average person, a male or a female, uh, is seen after uh, a series of very highly attractive males or females, that average person will be seen as much less attractive than when they are seen uh, in the context of um, less attractive individuals. Do you guys want to play a bit of a game with me? Of yes. course. It's a rating game. Okay. So you need to pretend that your boyfriend isn't going to see this. Okay. And you need to tell me what you think of these guys between 1 and 10. 1 being like they're kind of, ew, not so good. And 10 being like, oh my god, he's so hot. What's his phone number? Okay. <laughs> you ready for it? All right. We're just going to go through really fast. Ready? Two. Four. <laughs> Two. <laughs> what about this guy? Ten. ten. <laughs> you, Grant, gets a ten, okay? We yeah. have yeah, Brad Pitt. Ten. Ten? ten. We got eight. It's, it's Brad Pitt. It's Brad Pitt. And, and just one more time. Can okay. you just uh, rate these guys for me again? Two. 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 Oh, you agree, okay. One. One. <laughs> Four, two, three. <laughs> Is it like negative one before? <laughs> in the past, uh, our ancestors uh, were uh, living in small villages and they were very isolated and probably only saw maybe in their lifetimes because they didn't travel much, maybe 500 people. And now we can see that many people in, in a day. When there are a lot of attractive men in pop culture and movies and magazines, TV, we start to think it's common. So we see them everywhere and we think, Oh, they are everywhere. And then we expect to find that in our own life. I wrote a card to Chris O'Donnell when I was like 14. What? Yeah, I know, I sent him a card, <laughs> stop her. And uh, I, I wrote to him and said, you know, I think we're perfect for each other. I think that you should, I was 15 or 14, you're like, yeah. Wow. Um, I think you should meet me at the Eiffel Tower in a year or something, on, on some birthday of mine or something, and I'm just like, I thought it was totally normal, and I was so upset. Did you go? No. How do you know he didn't He didn't go write yet? me back, he didn't write, I know, maybe but he's yours, still yeah. there waiting for me. <laughs> Too high expectations is what destroys relationships, both from men and women, um, and I blame the media. You know, we are both told to expect the bigger, the better, the transcendent, the, the bigger and better than normal life, but normal life is is what we live. My colleague, who's an expert in uh, relationships and my area's media, we got together and we thought, let's examine whether people who consume a lot of romantic genre uh, media actually do have unrealistic expectations. What we found was the more you watch soap operas, romantic comedies, the reality programs about dating and relationships, the more you bought into these idealistic expectations.